And um, yeah, and, and it all depends on what you're selling too. So yeah. you know, it's, a, it's a big deal. Uh, speaking of um, local rappers in Houston that you work with, who do you think, um, like if you were to pick two, if you were to pick two artists, who do you think were, would, would be the dopest? One male, one female, who would you pick? Female, hands down, is Anna Mays. I love that chick. Um, her music is very inspiring. Beautiful, beautiful lady. Um, she's just, she's dope, really. Yeah. Um, and then for a male artist, there's a lot. Um, well, one, he's retired. He's a retired. Mm -hmm. It's Adrian Angelo. That's my boy right there. He has inspired me so much. Okay. Um, but he no longer raps. So I would have to say the next person that I've been jamming to lately is Houston's own MC. Yay, baby. Thank you. Yeah, Houston's own MC. He's dope. He's very lyrical, um, very relatable. He's from the north side of Houston. Um, and he's part of our team, the Damn Mexicans. And so we're a very tight-knit community. We're creating this organization. And so, um, yeah, having Latino hip-hop artists is... Yeah. Yeah, I got to support my people. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, there's so many of them coming up right now. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm doing this this uh, podcast like this, because, you know, we're, we're pretty much uncut and raw, right in your living room, right at your job, right wherever you're at, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, I want to create a platform and bring up some of these artists, because some of them aren't known out, out of the state or, or you know. Right. Um, uh, out of the city, so yeah, for sure, and that's that's the goal is is for Houston, Houston to get out of Houston and yeah. part of the U.S. and get to do all these tours. Um, yeah, I would love to see that, especially like I've been noticing. I'm like, okay, all right, so a lot of people from L.A. are moving to Texas, right? They're moving to Austin. Mm -hmm. If you notice on Netflix, there's a lot of those reality shows that are based mm -hmm. in Austin. Okay, mm -hmm. now we're starting to get some more Netflix movies that are filmed here in Houston. Right. Like I feel like Houston is is buzzing and and I don't I don't think people should sleep on it. Artists, business owners, entrepreneurs, like Houston is hot right now and I don't think people really understand that that we need to expand outside of Houston. So. Yeah. Houston been hot for a very long time and a lot of people like to throw our name out there and stuff, but you know, I feel like we're missing the whole thing that L.A. does have, and it's uh, the movie creators. We don't have enough movie creators. We don't have enough actors. Like, yeah. if I'm looking for an actor right now, if I want to create a movie right now, who am I going to call to play these positions? If, if I tell somebody, look, I want to do something like Jackass, right? I want to do some retarded stuff, right? So I, who do I pick? Everybody's going to be like, Oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I'm not going to be seen on camera doing this. So that's why we need more actors that are willing to do some of this stuff. Yeah. You know, we don't have people that, like, we're all serious in Houston. We're, <laughs> we're pretty much cutthroat hustlers, came from the struggle, trying to find a way out. But we don't think about other opportunities that can help us, like acting. You know, movies are big. People are making millions of dollars off movies. Absolutely. You know? And I feel like we should grow more in that area not just uh movies but models like we we always see the same little few probably the same maybe five to ten you know but we need more we need more uh models coming out not not only females but males too you know yeah so 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 we can attract uh people that are out there in la doing their work you know that they can come out here and do some photos uh do some commercials uh, for certain brands, like we're not big on that here, and and I feel like we we need to work on it. Like everybody's moving to Atlanta for that kind of stuff, and like you say, maybe Austin, but what about Houston? You know, Houston uh, needs to grow in that area, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, let's talk about the candy. So you you have candy as well. So how, how did that start? Uh, it's. I mean, everybody is, and their mom is doing chumway candies. And I didn't wow. want to hop on that train mm -hmm. just because so many, it's the, the market is saturated, but um, the market is saturated here in Houston and Texas. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I created, I, I organized the candy drip competition. I've done it two years in a row. And mm -hmm. although my specialty is micheladas, 
I also handcraft my own chamoy. And wow. so what can you put chamoy on? Fruit and candies and all kinds of shit, right? And so I started this event and I had people traveling from all over Texas to come to my event to compete. Who has the best chamoy? And it yeah. wasn't to be, there was no malice behind it. The, the intent behind it was to grow the market, to yeah. expand the market so that places like the Midwest where my family, they live in, in Illinois, they don't yeah. have access to those types of candies. And, mm. you know, Oregon and Washington, all the places that I have shipped out to, they don't have access to Mexican snacks, let alone mm -hmm. like a, a homemade handcrafted one. And so me doing the competition two years in a row and I'm like, okay, the market is growing. The market is growing. Let me just wait. And so as of recently, I, I mean, I've always done the chamoyon candies. I just never mm -hmm. sold them in packages. I just kind of put them mm -hmm. on top of my micheladas, like decoration or just like an add on. So I've always done them, but it wasn't until recently where I'm like, I need to sell them because they're pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, and there's a demand, like there really is a demand for it. So oh, yeah. why not? Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. That's crazy. You just made me think about, because I used to live in Chicago, and it, you know, it's, it, it, you, you don't see too much of that out there. Mm -mm, but I'm I mean, when, whenever, you, whenever you do see it, you want to buy it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm from Rockford. It's a small town outside of Chicago, and so mm -hmm. they they don't. I think they have like one Mexican store out there. Hmm. So yeah, they don't really have access to much. My my uncle, uh, one one of my uncles, um, all of his family members, they own. A, you may have heard of it, but. It's called Supermercado Gonzalez, and uh, there's a chain of those all over Waukegan and Round Lake and all these Chicago. They're everywhere, and uh, yeah. So I, I kind of grew up in that environment, like in a store, you know. Yeah. I used to tell me, jump behind the register. <laughs> shit, I probably was. Um, shit, I was young, man. I was probably 15 years old at behind the register at the, at the store. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I just think you're doing awesome out there. Uh, I love the branding. Thank you. There's so much more to come. Like, I'm not I am not just doing trap saws. I am expanding to – I'm a serial entrepreneur, you know. So yeah. there's so much, especially for next year, that's coming out. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned for that. We're actually going to be doing our own talk show with the Damn Mexicans. Mm -hmm. um, where we get to talk about our culture as Mexicans and really mm. – um, teach and educate and and build and give these types of conversations you know how to grow a business how to even start a business how to mm -hmm. you know like just all types of topics that like we weren't taught um or or the way that our parents condition us with certain things